well, maybe we'll I entertain questions for Dr. Maladi and his presentation. I see one come in through the chat, but please feel free to use the web, the Q&A as well. The question um, for you, Shasi, is please describe sequestered manure storage and, and what that means in practice. I think the question is asking, you know, where would this sequestered storage be or where should it be relative to the um, typical barn or, or typical barn configuration? So uh, sequestered storage will involve maintaining separate piles so that like say if you have if you have let's say a seven day sequestration period, then you would uh, have a pile of manure that you wouldn't add any fresh manure to it and you don't have contact with the birds. So it is removed and uh, it's stored at a, a secure site for that sequestration period, seven days. So meanwhile, you obviously need to have another pile where manure removed uh, during from the birds during that sequestration time that is to, stored in, in a separate pile. So in practice, once the sequestration, seven day sequestration time is completed, then this previous pile can be moved. And then the new pile could be, again, uh, you stop adding fresh manure to it and you would hold it as a new sequestration pile. So that could be a way of managing it, but obviously the how sequestration implement is implemented that has some flexibility in different layer premises. And the period of sequestration would only start once you've stopped adding fresh manure to that separate pile, correct? That is correct. Okay. Again, please uh, feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box. I have a question uh, from, you know, my engineering background, some of the some of the risk assessment uh, parameters are a little new to me. Uh, you mentioned, you know, log 10 EID 50 per gram. And there was a difference, I think, between 3.7 and 2.4 as far as concentrations based on different scenarios. Is that a significant difference? You know, is that difference important? Yes, because I think it's in the log scale. So when you convert it into the regular scale, about nine, the decrease in concentration from with that like 3.4 to going to maybe around 1.4 is around 95%. So the amount of virus is actually significantly reduced. And also this virus concentration only applies to those loads that are missed uh, that that have moved before detection. Mm -hmm. So it only uh, the likelihood re reduces with the increased sequestration period to about one percent. So the risk is still we're talking about this concentration in those one percent of cases where you might miss detection. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, the other one of the other facets that I found kind of intriguing was this concept of slow spread versus high spread. And how, how easy is that for us to determine at any given time for any given virus, you know, as we're currently in this, in this current HPA outbreak, is this something that someone is actively measuring? Or how do we, how do we ascertain that, um, that rate, rate of spread? Yes, so uh, in fact, like we have done a lot of work uh, on the analysis of the within barn spread patterns, as well as estimating the contact rate, which determines how fast it is spreading. So the analysis is called uh, time of introduction analysis. So what we do is we take the disease mortality and test return patterns. And um, so if there's a steep rise in mortality, then we can fit our model parameters to it. And so we can estimate give a window for when the flock might have potentially become infected, as well as how fast it is spreading. That is, a, we can estimate the adequate contact rate. If the, if the adequate contact rate is high, that means that it's fairly fast spread. And that's what we have seen through a lot of the time of introduction analysis that we have uh, performed in the current outbreak, particularly in layer burns, uh, spread has been quite, fast and we have seen some adequate contact num uh, contact rate numbers which are much higher than any of the previous outbreaks in the current outbreak. Thank you. 
We have some questions coming in from audience members. First question I wanted to ask is, are predators kept out of the sequestered manure? You know, it seems that on many poultry operations, these piles of manure and litter um, uh, with with dead birds, you know, can or with or without dead birds can be attractive to to predators around farms and can they help spread HPAI? That's that's a good question. And I think that uh, we have some biosecurity measures related to covered storage in the per sequestration, but I have to uh, double check with the risk assessment guidelines and permit guidance uh, guidelines from the secure quality systems uh, just to verify what exactly is the permit guidance on that. Sure. And I think those those guidances, I think they're part of the uh, list of resources that we're providing as part of this webinar as well. Another question related to this yeah, I think is is just trying to understand physically where and how these these sequestered manure storages could be or should be, right? We know that there's a lot of flexibility or not a lot of flexibility, but there's a lot of variability between resources on every farm. You know, this sequestered manure storage, is this just piled on the ground, contained within a building or any and all of the above? I think it's any and all of the above as, as long as you make sure that you don't have risk of spreading it to other poultry and so, uh, yeah, so as long as it's implemented securely, then I think that you have flexibility in like how, with, how exactly it is performed. Yeah. So another question, is the reduced risk because of the time the manure is away from the host or that the manure would have heated during the sequestration time? You know, what, is, what is reducing that risk in, in this analysis that you did? If litter heating reduces the risk, would turning a litter similar to turning a wind pro, wind, windrow pile, a compost pile, for example, would that increase the benefit? Um, so definitely there is some risk reduction uh, because of as the manure heats up and so thermal inactivation. But the focus of this analysis, so with the sequestration time, is regardless of inactivation, regardless of thermal inactivation. So what's happening by storing the manure for a certain amount of time, say seven days before moving, is that you give additional time for disease to spread within the barn and you have higher chance of detecting hypothyroid. So a particular manure load, if you had no sequestration, you could have moved, moved it off the premises. But if you wait for seven, seven more days and you are having daily and adequate testing, then you have a much higher likelihood of detecting and so that manure load is not uh, has a much lower likelihood of moving before detection. Yeah, makes sense. Um, with Jean's presentation, that would go into some of the treatment of that manure. So I think, uh, as you mentioned, this is about figuring out first of all where do we need to focus our efforts, right, for for treating contam HPAI contaminated manure and or mortalities, um, just through that testing protocol. Yeah, makes sense. Another question is, do you have any guidance or point, or can you point to any resources about where this sequestered manure storage should be relative to the, to the barn or other manure storages, storage areas? Um, there should be adequate separation between the barn and the sequestration site, mm -hmm. depending on what is feasible. Because again, you don't want fresh contamination from the barn and the birds uh, to the sequestration pile. So, because that's the way the sequestration was defined is without contact with, uh, removed from the birds without contact and without addition of fresh manure. So, as long as we make sure that there's a lower chance of contamination from, let's say, other manure, um, as well as enough separation from the barns, I think that's, that should be fine. And and I think it sounds like you're mainly focused on that maybe physical contact, physical contact between this um, the sequester pile and other sources. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, some just 
some more clarification about what this uh, sequestered pile or sequest secure storage might look like or could look like. You know, is it really can be can it be as simple as a separate pile away from the barn or other storage? Or you know, should we be considering additional additional means of protection, locked building or preventing wildlife access, for example? I think in general, uh, in a lot of the uh, previous outbreaks, so say case control studies, wildlife has come up as uh, scavengers, have come up as risk factors like observing scavengers. Um, so I think it's important to prevent access to uh, wildlife in general, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's mortality or manure. Um, so, but other than that, it can be quite simple. So it can be a, just a separate uh, pile. You don't need like a, a full, uh, a separate like full construction of a building. It can be very simple segregation from from the barn and without contact with fresh manure. But uh, but the wildlife risk has to be addressed. Great, thank you.